Hello and welcome to today's Portmaster FAQ video. I am going to explain how the SPN works today. Uh, I will start with how a regular internet connection works. If you're getting content served from a website, then go through it and the difficulties that VPNs have. And in the end, I will go in a fairly lengthy and hopefully um, well enough explained explanation on how SPN works um, with some assets so you can hopefully grasp it a little bit more easily. The video was shot not in the best conditions. I'm sorry for that, um, just up front. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'm not above re-recording all of this, um, maybe at a later point, but I, after watching it, I thought that the content is good enough um, in regards to how well I think I put it and um, how how it actually like visualizes all of that. But feedback is super welcome, so please leave them in the comments below if you don't like it um, and what you don't like or what you did like. Um, should I maybe pick other sweets next time? Let me know. Um, and yeah, you will see all of that just in a bit. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your interest. And please share this video with people who are like concerned about tracking um, in regards to VPNs and don't understand how that works and what locking actually is and stuff like that. All of this is covered in this video. Um, we appreciate um, yeah, all the love we have been getting on YouTube recently. Uh, thank you for um, being here, helping us. And now on to the explanation. So let me show you how a regular connection works. I'm demonstrating content on different home pages with chocolate bars. So what you see here, this is this home page serves you a Knoppers. The home page back here serves you a Kinder Country. But for now, what I'd like to do is show you a typical connection without a VPN. So you are connected from your laptop top to your ISP and directly get routed to the home page. What happens there, and this is the quickest one, that's the reason why I'm going with it uh, very quickly, the Knoppers gets um, delivered to your laptop super fast and easy. Um, there is encryption involved, um, so HTTPS, we're all familiar with the lock, encrypts this, but for privacy purposes people are always concerned about the domain name and the IP address and my ISP knowing what I'm, where I'm visiting and this is not encrypted. Um, and them actually seeing that it is a Knoppers, which be HTTP, which is basically not um, a problem anymore. So when people are looking into increasing their privacy, they typically are concerned about their ISP um, which like they of course know who you are um, and they want to sort of hide and protect what they do from the ISP because they, they know maybe that they sell the data and uh, a lot of them do or they don't trust them with their data or they don't trust um, the, the direction, um, stuff in the country is going, whatever. So there are so many reasons why they want to sort of protect, why they want to increase the privacy of their connections and hide what they do from an ISP. Um, also, of course, a, a common use case is if you're traveling and you maybe don't know your ISP and you have a hotel and whatever. So, so many reasons why you want to protect and why you want to hide what you do here. Um, and so what a VPN does, to quickly go over this and to sort of explain the the reasons why the encryption for VPN is built for security and not for privacy and what comes with it is let's look at what happens with the Knoppers now. So the, the, the data from this homepage gets sent to the VPN and what the VPN then does is wrap it in a layer of encryption and then send that to your device and then it gets unwrapped. Most people understand this setup. Where it gets a little bit difficult and where people don't quite understand, or what people sort of like don't quite understand is they are now concerned with logging at the VPN server because they think 
that the server is the only because it is doing the the wrapping the server is the only thing that can know what packet has come in and what packet has come out but because of how encryption works the isp of that server technically knows as well it sees the knoppers going in and it sees something that is almost the same size as the knoppers but with the same layer of encryption as everything else going in and out going out so if you know how much gets added by the encryption and you can differentiate between the, the VPN encrypted and the, the, that's not the case. So th that's not hard to do. You know which part is the post and which is the pre VPN encrypted traffic. And so you can fairly easily s uh, detect what part from going in has been sent forward. So people are concerned about um, logging here by the VPN provider. People are concerned probably about um, hacks as well, which have been happening in the past and VPN companies have been slow to respond um, and to disclose. But also, of course, the ISP uh, of that server has that information. So you have three types of logging to be concerned about. And yes, your ISP probably does not know um, what content gets served to you. But um, when people are concerned about logging, they're typically concerned about here. And we looked at this and we understood, we were like, well, this is like telling people we are not logging is basically um, a white lie where we are telling people, yeah, we are not logging and we're protecting your data from hacks and stuff like that. But we of course know that the, the ISP, which this server is connected to, can see that and can log that and it can be observed from the outside the server. It does not be, have to be a full on hack. And if it's uh, on the network layer of that server, basically the switch the server attaches to can be compromised and stuff like that. And we would have no way of knowing this. And no VPN company has a way of knowing this. And uh, the reason why they don't talk about it is because that's how the internet works. And um, you cannot protect against everything except when you prepare for it from the get-go. And so what we thought about is, okay, um, this is clearly not good enough. And what VPN companies then do is chain a couple of these next to each other, which is basically then saying, well, I then have a second wrap around this, but I can still see incoming and outgoing traffic. And it does not help because the underlying difference between if I have a Knoppers or if I have a bis uh, Ballisto, they are different sizes and bits. And for us as humans, we can only guesstimate the difference in size, but for computers, this is so easy to detect and it's so easy to see the difference in bits and so on. So even if encryption changes um, the bit order, the overall size does not change. And so it's fairly easy to follow um, like one knoppers through those chains and differentiate it from a ballisto, for instance. And so this is, this even if multiple layers of encryption um, this is like following the traffic and traffic analysis. Absolutely nothing VPNs can protect you against. So what do we do different? Um, let's change this out. We are um, building a network. So what SPN does is building a network between multiple servers. And when you connect to an SPN node, you're actually connecting into a whole network of servers. And because the SPN works together with Portmaster as a firewall, what we do is we can break down the data into little bits. So what we typically say is, we're beaming your connection. So instead of just wrapping it once, we're actually having a multi-hop. So it's not the first server you're connected to, but it's the second or the third one, or, and they are now ordered in a circle as well, which is reflective of how SPN works. You can go in circles inside the SPN. And between those servers, data is sent in fixed packet sizes. And so 
this is like those little pills I'm spreading around here, like the Mentos. And so this is the traffic from all the people which are already connected in the network. And when you are requesting new data, it lands here and this Knoppus gets broken down into little Mentos, which are then sent through the SPN, through your ISP, and then get reassembled here into the proper Knoppers. Why is this more secure? We are breaking down the Knoppers into multiple parts, and those parts have to be the same size. So if we are doing padding, if the, if the brakes are in unfavorable sizes, we pad them. So in the end, the, the Knoppers bar would be a little bit bigger. So maybe the ballista then would be the same size as the Knoppers. We're mixing it in here. It goes through multiple servers and all other people in the network have the same size. Um, so it is the mixing here is what actually makes the disconnect between the website you're visiting and the data you're receiving. And in addition to this, if you're requesting a kinder country from a different website, also through the SPN at the same time, that gets broken down into Mentos as well. And that is mixed. And if you're doing it at the same time, even better, that gets mixed. Those are broken down at their SPN nodes. The Mentos travel through the network and they are getting reassembled here. So there's an actual disconnect between the data on the servers, on the nodes, and on your device. I hope <laughs> I was able to um, bring a little bit more clarity in how this works. If you have any further questions, I'm, I'd love to dive into um, more specifics in each of these, but I hope this sort of like helps you understand um, how everything works together. So with a VPN, just as a quick recap, you're only getting one thin layer of um, aluminum foil basically, which wraps the data, but it can be observed from the outside and it can be logged. Um, and because it is clear what it is going in and then only slightly altered going out, you can follow this along. And with SPN, what we do is we actually break it down, we mix it with all the other people in the SPN, and then it gets reassembled here. So the actual sneaker, uh, the actual knoppers is only valid until it hits the first SPN node, which is your exit node in that case, and when it arrives at your destination. Making um, each ISP of those servers incapable of following those data packets because they're all the same and it does not matter if they go to your device, if they go to another SPN customer's device. And maybe this also explains for some people why we're not having more and more and more SPN nodes because double the SPN nodes means half the traffic in each node means half the Mentos between each of those nodes. And we want those connections to be as mixed as possible with the most people in there. So what we're opting for is bigger servers with lots more bandwidth than a lot of small servers. We have people asking us if they can run a Pi. If your Pi only can handle two people, then the Mentos aren't mixing well. So this is the reason and Portmaster sees this and it takes this into account. And so Portmaster prioritizes all of this um, way more than what VPNs could actually do, even with their technology and how they try to, to patch everything together. So get actual privacy and get a system that is built for privacy. Um, and SPN has built like this from the get-go because we knew that it's not just your ISP, it's your server's ISP, it's the website's ISP you have to worry about as well. It's not just um, like one aluminum foil or your data, that's not enough. That's what HTTPS 
does to a certain degree as well. So <laughs> it's not good enough to do it like this. Um, and SPN is an actual solution. See you around.